Welcome back to another episode of Sports Medicine on Tap. My name is Brandon O'Line. I'm sitting at a nice packed neck of the woods brewing company in Pittman, New Jersey with my good friend, Dr. Frey. Dr. Frey, how you doing, man? Spectacular. It's It feels like a long time since we got to sit down. It does. Enjoy a f- couple of tasty beers that Frank's cooks up back there. Right. And just talk, you know, talk shop and do whatever. We've been busy living life. We've been... That's what happens. And, you know, uh, I think... It seems even longer for us because, yeah. uh, if I remember correctly, leading into the, the couple-week uh, hiatus, mm-hmm. we had recorded a double show. Yeah. So so we, when we do that, we, you know, we'll record two in one night, release one, and mm-hmm. then save the other one for the following week. So right. it's been that much longer since yeah. we've been here, you know, hanging yeah. out. And yeah, I know. Beers. And I mean, last the last one we did record, we had, you know... Athletic training royalty, if you will, with Kevin Bryles. Yes, we, did. we We had uh, Brad come back on, Brett, Dr. Brad Bernardini. And we, right. you know, we talked shop with all of them. We went all over the place, and it's kind of crazy. We we talked. Oh, so wait, that wasn't the double show. My mistake. My oh mistake. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. But right before that, we did the double. That's but either, we did the double, but no, yeah. but either way, we the whole NCAA tournament came and went between recording. We recorded before it happened. Right. And now the championship for men was over. last night, and the women's were over the weekend. Right. Now the whole thing's completely gone, and it's like. Came and went so fast. Super entertaining tournament. Right. You know, the watching your brackets and all that stuff was really interesting. How did you do? I had UConn and Purdue in the finals. So did I. But I had Purdue winning. <laughs> oh, I, I had UConn winning, which got me third place. Yeah. <laughs> On the podium, but not where I wanted to yeah, be. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I finished second, and I was like, I didn't. I was like, oh wow, I called the called the finals match. Oh, this right. is going to be interesting. And, you know, i just been swamped with all kinds of stuff. I actually had to work uh, a baseball game this past uh, Sunday. So sure. I went Sunday into an early morning Monday. So I was beat yesterday for the Monday night game. And it was like 920. So there was like, I knew yeah. going into it, I was like, I might catch tip off in a little bit. And that's all. I'm, I know I'm how gonna, this ends. <laughs> I know right, how this I'm, ends. I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wake up and have to Google who won or see, right. you know, whatever. But um, it's funny. I, you know, I was, I was like. You know, you look back and you're like, oh, one more pick. You know, I missed by like whatever. I lost by three yeah. points. And um, I actually remember, like, I didn't watch a ton of college basketball this mm-hmm. year. No. So life's just too busy, right, at yeah. times. And I do remember actually catching an Alabama game and thinking to myself, if they're anywhere near the top, I'm putting them in the Final Four. And then, and then like, picks came, and I could kind of rip through all my picks pretty mm-hmm. quickly. And then Alabama's in the Final Four, and I was like, Oh, I'd forgotten about that yeah. little promise to myself. <laughs> Had I not forgotten that little uh-huh. promise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, um, it's just been like you said, we've just been busy. We've been doing a bunch of stuff. You know, I'm in I'm in the middle of spring season. We have spring football going on at work, so it's sure. like we got all kinds of stuff going on and yeah. just you I think you were away. You were oh, traveling the world. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So one of one of the reasons we couldn't do it last week, mm-hmm. I was in Spain. That's awesome. Uh, we went to Barcelona and to Sevilla. And I got to say, I, th- I think Sevilla is my my new favorite city in the world. Like, it yeah, was, it was amazing. So that's awesome. while we're in Barcelona, we had the good fortune of catching an FC Barcelona game. That's awesome. It was a ton of fun. Um, they, they ended up winning their game. We really got rain really one day or one mm-hmm. day slash night while we were out there. Of course, that was the night. But that didn't that didn't stop anybody. Yeah. And it was just great, man. Like the, the see, environment, the, yeah, the environment, yeah. like the excitement and the cheering and everything. And like, like we weren't too far from the crazy sections mm-hmm. and they're, they're, they're like literally they're fenced off. And, yeah. um, and then we had a, a bunch of people that were right in front of us that were also like nuts. And that, yeah. so that adds to the excitement of yeah. it. Um, so that, that was an exciting game. It's an awesome city. Like Gaudi, it's like Gaudi everywhere. So it's like, it's really cool. You see all this Gaudi stuff. We went up yeah. to Girona, mm-hmm. which is a city. It's probably like 40, uh, 45 minutes, maybe an hour from, from Barcelona. Mm-hmm. They filmed a, a lot of the sixth season of Game of Thrones there. Okay. So, like, you can imagine what that looks like. Like, right. you walk into another world. You're like, yeah. what Whoa, is going right, on? It right. really looks like, like, like shame. <laughs> like it's, 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 it's unbelievable. Right. Walking to the streets, you're like, oh, I right. feel like I've been here before. No, right. literally. Yeah. It, and it's, it's incredible. Like, that's, that's what the city looks like. It's, right. It's, it's amazing. And then we also went up to uh, Montserrat, which is uh, where the monks are, like, way up in the mountains. Mm-hmm. I was blown away. I mean, just utterly spectacular. Right. Then we go like, and, and there's all these highlights. It's really amazing. And then we go to to Sevilla, mm-hmm. and um, such a beautiful city. I get it's a, it's it's small but pretty big at the mm-hmm. same time. People are super nice, not incredibly expensive, yeah. and uh, yeah. like like again, just utterly blown away. Yeah. Did, didn't didn't had no idea what I was what I was in for. Right. And then this is crazy. So you know, it's, it's a sports show. Let's, so to bring it back to the topic of sports. So we get there on, uh, I forget, Wednesday or Thursday night, whatever night. We, we get there, and it's a Thursday night. 
we see people walking around with the with their you know the football jerseys on and whatnot, mm -hmm. and they're chanting in the streets. And I had looked it up. I was like, you, you know, we saw the Barcelona was going to be in town. We went and saw our game, and I checked to see if Sevilla, uh, if their team was going to be in town, mm -hmm. and they were out of town. And I see people with their jerseys and the chanting. I'm like, what is that all about? And uh, you know, one of the bartenders or restaurant whatever waiters is like, oh, there's such and such a game. I'm like, all right, and I didn't pay any mind to it. Friday rolls around. We actually went to Gibraltar, and which was kind of cool, rock up with Gibraltar, whatnot. And on right. the way back, um, my wife, and my daughter went and did like some shopping or something. My son and I were trying to work our way back to the hotel. And just, it's all these tiny little alleyways right. and whatnot. And yeah. It's just really cool. Just so you get to soak it in when you just kind of venture off. And just, Amazing. Yeah. And we could, we could have pulled out you know Google Maps and found our way back. Right. I'm like, you know what? Let's just like walk around. Yeah. Let's just find it. Just get engrossed in the whole situation and go for it. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Really. So then we're kind of trying to figure it out. We can't find it. We hear a lot of cheering. Also, we pop out into this square. Well, first I see like this massive church, which are, you know, they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. And, beautiful uh, but out there, right? It's gorgeous. I mean, amazing. Right. And I'm like, you know, our hotel's near that, so I know where we got to go. But like, what are all these people? And it was like wall to wall, like for like, like shoulder to shoulder. And like everyone's cheering. Everyone's got their jerseys on. They're going absolutely nuts. And I'm like, what is happening right, here? Right. So, of course, where we were, we had to walk through this crowd, and it's like literally like half a mile, and it was like being like a college frat party, like like shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> Just yeah, pardon, please. pardon, pardon, pardon. <laughs> like they're trying, try, try, trying to get through as they're knocking people over. And, right. And uh, we get to finally we get like kind of to the other side, and we get to the hotel, and we're like, what is going on? So they had the King's Cup, which no. within the Liga, which is the Spanish league, they do like another tournament within the within right. the league. And I think the winner gets a bid to the Champions League. Right, right, right. So, right. so uh, the two teams that were playing in the fi so the finals of the Kings Cup, neither team was from Sevilla, mm -hmm. uh, were Mallorca and Bilbao. Okay. Bilbao's in the basically the north of Spain. We're in Sevilla, the south of Spain. It's mm -hmm. like eight nine uh, eight nine hours between the two. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there's like three hundred and forty thousand people live in Bilbao. Mm -hmm. There were like, somewhere between sixty and eighty thousand people from Bilbao in Sevilla. Like, oh, wow. like a quarter of the city's population Jeez. came down. And, and so, like, apparently every every single hotel, mm -hmm. every single Airbnb, every single, um, uh, like, like, any place, that, every room was sold well, out yeah. within Sevilla. Like, like, we were very lucky that we had a room. We got in it before those teams made the finals. Mm -hmm. And, like, they, they said, like, there's just going to be a lot of people don't have any place to stay. Yeah. And, like. This was Friday night, and it's like they have the flags out, and it's cheering. Everybody's drinking, yeah. and like really super nice, and a ton of fun, and everything like yeah, that. Yeah. And um, well, like this, this is absolutely bonkers. Game wasn't until Saturday. Jeez. It's, it's so right, different. Friday right? night, it's yeah. they're going nuts. So then we were leaving Saturday morning. I wish, I wish we were there because I really so badly would have loved to have gone oh, to yeah, that game. Oh yeah, sure that would have been electric. So we're in a car driving to the airport at like four in the morning, and. Um, <laughs> they're still out there, man. <laughs> they don't stop, people. man. They're at bars and they're still drinking. Jeez. They're still. I was like, this is insane. That's wild. And the game was that night. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was wild. It was. It was a ton of fun. Yeah. It was a great experience. Anyone who ever has a chance to go, that that is a great place. To I visit. definitely would say that's a bucket list item. Like yeah. seeing a soccer game in Europe. Like I know it's like I know you and I went to a, a Union game. Thanks to shout out to Tyler Knight Heck from yeah, FC man. Charlotte. Yeah. You know he hooked us up with those tickets when they came to town. And, you know, live sporting events are always just way different feel than watching it on TV. But I can only imagine what it's really like. Like right. you said, like in Europe, like that's like that's like the soccer heartland. Like right. That, like, yes, it's so much more passionate out there. And that's like way such a bigger deal. It's mesmerizing. Dude. Like, so so we get back, you know, it's, it's, we had a layover in Lisbon. We're there forever. We, we get back and um, we're in the car trying to get back. We were, you know, we flew in and out of Newark. So it's a little bit of a mess. Yeah. Um, and. My son's got the game on, and he's like, he's watching, he's 100% into it. Yeah. And now he's rooting as hard as he can for Bilbao because he's so, like, like he was yeah. just so blown away by it. Yeah, this. he just got sucked up into it, right? right? right. And apparently it's, it's, it is a, like, a very dedicated fan base, and mm -hmm. they hadn't won the King's Cup in 40 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then they're down one nothing, and then uh, they tie it up near the end, and, uh, and, it goes to, and it goes to extra extra time. Mm -hmm. Nobody scores in extra time. Goes to, to penalty kicks. Of course. And uh, of course, of course. And Bill Bow won in penalty kicks. Wow. And, that, and So we like pulled up like YouTube images, and it was like, like you know, the, the flares in the streets, uh -huh. and like oh, everyone, yeah, everyone like nuts. just out of their minds. Yeah. Bonkers. Yeah, yeah very A couple cool. days away from seeing something crazy, right? Right, like, right, right, right. Yeah. It's unreal. Yeah, yeah, really crazy. Well, you know, it's funny you said that uh, – you had a little bit of rain for your your so the game that you call. 
Man, you miss a whole bunch of rain here. It's, I heard. It was like just raining for days and days right. and days. And, and an just, earthquake. And it, yeah, so we, we had an earthquake, a solar eclipse. Like we've just been going all through Mother Nature's all <laughs> ups know. and downs. Um, and I did feel the earthquake. Now. I did feel oh, the did earthquake you? at yeah. the ha- my house. Yeah, I was at my house doing something in my kitchen, and I have a hanging wine glass, and they started rattling together. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds like a really loud truck going down the street. But I was like, is that truck like outside my house? Like, why is it not going away? It just didn't stop, and it like went for a couple minutes. And I was like, huh. And I was busy getting ready for work, whatever the case was. And then I picked my phone up, and everyone was like, you guys feel that's an earthquake? And all these different notifications, text, everyone was asking what's going on. And I looked, and I was like, oh, wow, we had an earthquake. Here we are. One of my friends sends around a meme, which was, I thought was hysterical. And it's like a little picnic table with like little plastic chairs all around it. And one of them's laying on its yeah. side. And it was, we will rebuild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it was just crazy. Even There's like there the was a video. I think uh, the Yankees were taking batting practice at the time. Yeah. And like the, the camera's going crazy. And the guys right. are still hitting the BP. And it's like, so it's just such a rare thing for out on the East Coast, especially in New Like. I remember it was a 2011. It was about yeah, 2011. Yeah, so I was in the OR. Really? It, yeah, yeah. So I don't remember what case I was doing, but I remember I was in the operating room, and all of a sudden I'm like shaking, and uh, and I'm like, I jump on like the patient. I'm like, the patient's waking up. <laughs> I yell to anesthesia, and, uh, and and they're like, I don't think so. And the, that OR happened to have windows in the mm-hmm. in the door, and you can actually see out like big windows on the other side. Yeah. And I just saw telephone poles. Like this. Side to side, and I was yeah. like, the patient's not waking up. Yeah. Like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It and it, it, so it's funny with that, that one 10 or 13 years ago, whatever it was, I was at my mother's house and I remember I was standing by the front door uh-huh. and I opened the front door to look outside what was going on. I put my one hand on the drive on the inside, one hand on the siding. Oh, and really? my mom's house was just shaking in my hands. I was like, this is so weird. <laughs> I've never felt this sensation before. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Right. Um, luckily, we had no issues, thank God, with the earthquake. It wasn't right. that big of a magnitude here. And, you know, we had the solar eclipse yesterday. Kind of you know, cool. Yeah, we kinda recorded on Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, we recorded on Tuesday, so it was on Monday. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we saw that. I got to, I got my solar glass, protected my eyes, and went and checked it out a little bit. It was pretty interesting. It was Very like, cool. Never really saw one before, and it, yeah. you know, or at least I haven't. So I haven't either. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I think I was operating for the last one again, so there's no chance of getting out to see that. Right. So this time I was in the office, and I popped out for a couple minutes. Yeah. But sure enough, so I popped out as, as like, as we were approaching peak in this oh, area, was- right? Perfect. And you could see it amazingly, uh-huh. right? And then, of course, it popped out right at peak and clouds, clouds. rolled. In. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, like, it was kind of across the board, like, all my all my buddies in our group chats were like, yep, the clouds won that one. I saw, right. I saw it leading up to I saw everything. It looked like a crescent moon with yeah. the sun, whatever. But clouds won. I caught one glimpse of, like, one little break in the clouds maybe three minutes after mm-hmm. the after the peak, which yeah. is, so it still looked great. It still, yeah. Like I said, you know, still a very interesting thing to see. Absolutely. You know, and obviously took all precautions and saved my eyes got the glasses and all that stuff of course so uh, i didn't realize this um and whether it's true or not I, I guess i guess i don't know 100 percent for sure but my son is pretty into this stuff and i, and I sent him a text bust out our camera like because he does a lot of really cool photography and different stuff mm-hmm. like that and i was like bust out the camera and he's like it'll destroy it like if you don't have the right filters right and even apparently with iphones it, it'll, yeah. it'll destroy the sensors if you're if you if you keep them up looking mm-hmm. at it for too long no, which i had no idea yeah and it's just such a under or overlooked thing everyone just thinks like, oh it's covered well it's next obviously we're we're in sports medicine we're not in sun astrophysics or whatever the case yeah. is you know what i mean like you don't take your chances with it you're like no. we even my buddy was like ah, it's not gonna be that bad i was like dude just don't look at it don't like, do don't, it yeah don't. yeah that's a terrible decision like don't and then it's funny i think afterwards on social media i was scrolling and it says the uptick is why my eyes hurt is like the most popular google search right now across the board oh and it's like oh man like you got like come on there's yeah. plenty of warnings just just yeah. take take the precaution and you know be safe about it yeah i thought it was gonna get darker maybe just because it of did. Where we are, it didn't yeah. get as dark as I thought it yeah, was. Yeah, I thought thing. we were in like the 70, 80 yeah. percent coverage, and I thought it was gonna be, but it did get a little dark. It did and a I was little like, bit. It yeah. looked kind of, it kind of reminded me like a big storm was coming, and right. like that darkness came over and yeah. whatever. But like, there's no clouds or whatever the case was. So it was, again, just interesting. Yeah. Um. So I guess we could just dive right into it. We've been talking about just catching up about a bunch of things. We did talk about a little bit about the NCAA brackets. You know, yeah. UConn went re- repeat champions, which is a rarity. And then on the women's bracket, you know, yeah. South Carolina went completely undefeated this season. It's 38 0. I don't know if enough people realize that because like, all the attention has been on Caitlin Clark for, for yeah, good reason. Right. right. Like, yeah. And, you know, even the um, coach from South Carolina gave a lot of kudos to Caitlin Clark for elevating the game of women's basketball. Yeah. And she has. I mean, she was. And I even saw some stuff recently that, like, the Trailblazers, the Portland Trailblazers have been 
heavily scouting her. They've been sending scouts to her games, and there's no rules in the NBA that you can't draft Seriously? a woman. That would be amazing. So if she does that, I mean, she's just trailblazing a lot of different oh paths for God. all different kinds. Of, and yeah, she was just in the, blowing you know, down walls. That would be and that, and you know, she did the three point contest against Steph Curry this yeah, year. Yeah, very and like, cool. You know, like I think the integration of women's sports in general across the board is getting more advanced, and especially in basketball. Oh, without question, basketball. It's I a think, different game. It's a very yeah. exciting game. It's more of like like the. I don't want to. I don't want to say it incorrectly. It's more of a f- fundamental game. Fundamental maybe. technical game. That's the game. best yeah, way yeah. to say. It. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what I. You know, I cover men's and women's basketball, and I say, you know, there's different things that you get excited about. Right. Like, don't get me wrong. Everyone loves a big, you know, throw down dunk mm-hmm. in men's basketball. It's, but like, if you really appreciate the sport, the X's and O's of it, and yeah. When you see these women out there playing and they execute these plays so well, and they're wide open, they take right. these beautiful shots, and they're, you know. They're playing the game, like you said, fundamentally so yeah. sound, and they're doing it so well. I mean, to win 38 games and not get beat by anybody. Almost unheard of. It's like, amazing. It's, you know, you don't see it. It doesn't happen in baseball. No one's going 162. Right. 62, and it doesn't happen in, in NBA. No one's no one's on 82. And I mean, what was it, 73 and 9, I think, is the best record. 73, right. 72 and 10, whatever the case is. But, man, those... Those women on that team were just phenomenal. Seriously, yeah. And really, like next level. And you know, Caitlin Clark did her thing in that championship game, but it's not like she didn't play well. Right. Yeah. She's played great, but again, yeah. team sport. And when you got a team of really high level IQ basketball players right. and you play the good fundamental game, you're gonna win. Not that Iowa wasn't a good team as well. Right. It wasn't just Caitlin Clark, but, no, but exactly. they just came up against a better team. Yeah. Like they were a really good mm-hmm. team. To that extent, also then bring it back to the guy's game. <laughs> UConn was so good. All year. And it was pretty exciting. You know, uh, Dan Hurley, the, the UConn coach, I think mm-hmm. said it a couple different times. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, for the most part, it was pretty clear that UConn and Purdue were the two best teams mm-hmm. in NCAA men's basketball you know, the entire year. And it's exciting when you get that matchup. Yeah. But, like, UConn was so, so good. good. They, if they, When they played teams that weren't that good, they didn't just win. They buried them. And then yeah. when they played teams that were really good, they won by a lot. Like, yeah. that wasn't like... No, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah they yeah. just... Again... You mix that strong fundamentals of just yeah. basic basketball and strong defense. And, I mean, the saying defense wins championships and all that, it comes through. It, yeah. I feel like in the game of basketball, like that defense wins championships, if you can stop another team from scoring, like yeah. it changes the whole outlook of a whole game and, and like it makes it way different. It doesn't happen immediately. It takes the whole game. You begin yeah. to wear them down and then eventually. Yeah, like, and, you and you know, basketball has always been said a game of runs. You know, you've yeah. got to go on. And if you can stop them from going on a run and you continue to make your runs effective – yeah, you're gonna just blow teams out. You know, and I, I think actually, I, I I actually think Dan Hurley is a very good coach. Yeah, and I think he's gonna have a lot of success uh, uh, mm-hmm. at UConn now. A little bit arrogant, but but man, he's a good coach. Yeah. And when we when we did our you know our Kevin Bryles mm-hmm. you know pregame our primer for the NCAA, you know, I talked about you know the fact that you know Edie's this monster out there, just seven foot four, like really good basketball mm-hmm. player. And I always worry about that. You know, if you focus a lot on one guy, sometimes you get him into foul trouble. Mm-hmm. And he actually went the opposite direction. Right. He, he said Edie's not going to score seventy. We just let him have his bunch, mm-hmm. and we're going to stop everybody else. Yep. And and that's what it did. Like eventually, it, it just shut everything down. Yeah. Like I give him credit. Like he didn't go with the conventional approach. Right. That's what worked. Hey. And I feel like you watch that UConn team, and it's not just that game. Like like it's like if you like when when the times that I've watched them, you know they, they score baskets, and you're watching them, you know like set up their plays, and they're mm-hmm. very patient. They mm-hmm. play out every single play, and like. You know, one guy winds up like hopping through four people, making six different passes, and then eventually gets a shot, and you're like, "Oh, that was a lot of luck. Mm-hmm. There's no way they could do that again." And then the next time down, they do it again, and then yeah. the next time down, they do it again, and then they reach a point where like the defense on the other team is like giving up. Like, what do we do? Like, yeah, what do we do? Like, who do we who do we focus? Keep yeah. doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and I impressive. think when you get a team that's really good, and you have like, like you said, I think when that the basketball is hot and it's moving around the court, and you can't right. don't know who's going to shoot the ball, or don't right. know who's going to be the next guy, it's tough. Sort of reintroducing a little bit of fundamentals. Yeah. Again, right? <laughs> but it's, you know, when you, you capitalize on those things, you just make a big difference. And I think we can transition into another topic of basketball. Because wow. um, right behind you, we do have the Sixers on. Oh, yeah. And as we've done plenty of times, we've talked about Joel Embiid a lot. But yeah. now he's back. He's you know, back. We, we talked about his initial injury. His secondary injury to that initial injury that led to the meniscus tear that required the surgery. And in a second show a week later. Yeah. You know, we back-to-back showed it. So 
in effort to talk about him again, we're only going to put a little piece of Joel Embiid. We got a lot of other stuff to talk about, but yeah. we, you know, he's back now. He yeah. did miss the 29 games. The Sixers struggled a little bit. They went 11 and 18 without him. Yeah. Um, but he bit. came back and he's 26 and a half points, five rebounds, five assists, two steals per game. Then he came back. That guy's amazing. You know, and he's still, after missing, like I said, 29 games, which is a big chunk of an 82 game season, sure. he still has more like 50 point games than most of the other big stars in the, in the league. And, you know, he did a lot of great things in the time that he was here before. Yeah. Now, for the Sixers, who are sitting in that 7th, 8th spot in the East, you just yeah. hope that he can ramp up and get his cardio back and get his conditioning going in the right, right spot and make a splash. And Hopefully, they're lucky enough to, to maintain, you know, like kind of out of the play-in area, yeah. you know, and stay, stay like just, you know, right in the playoffs. And then, like you said, this is a little bit of time to get, you know, mm-hmm. shake off a little bit of the rust yep. and, and ramp it up. I don't, I don't think he's fully 100%. No. Right. Yeah, I yeah. think, you know, I think it takes, I mean, mm-hmm. 29 games is, you know, it's a lot of time yeah. in the regular time, if you will. I mean, yeah. I think we did that episode back in early February. And he's a champion deconditioner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, when he gets out of shape, it's very obvious. Yeah, right. And, you know, he's huffing and puffing and going up and down the court. But I think, as a, you know, obviously as a Sixers fan, I hope they can make it, make it run for it. And, you know, you hope he kind of catches that wind and get his conditioning up and kind of peaks at the right time and... Right. You know, that chunk of the season when he was dropping 50-point games or whatever, you hope that just translates and that his second season, if you will, it happens in the playoffs. Round two can, in the playoffs. Round two in the playoffs, and he can like kind of make a splash with that. You know, we, we talked about him you know, right when he went down, mm-hmm. and, you know, I think we all sort of guesstimated, uh, and, and uh, we kind of got it fairly close. I, and I, I'd have to go back to the show and listen, but if yeah. I remember, we all kind of guesstimated, yeah, coming back sort of right before mm-hmm. the playoffs, right. trying to get a few games in, which it mm-hmm. seems like is how it's working out. But I will say, in the back of my mind, there was a little bit of worry. Could this possibly be it? So it's nice It's nice to see him back. Right, because I mean... And scoring well it's and only, playing reasonably well. It only would take like one small setback to just say, as Sixers, GM, or personnel, medical staff, whomever, just like, well, if he's having issues now, why, why push it? Right. Just see what happens and then go for it and then just shut him down for the rest of the season or whatever the case is. And that's yeah. something you don't want to see. You know what I mean? No, like, no. But luckily, it seems like everything went according to plan. Right. He took the time off. He did his rehab. He got back. He was doing on-court stuff for a little while. And then he got cleared to go back in the games. And it's like, he's doing okay. What a difference maker, man. Like, right. like you really appreciate just how good he is. And mm-hmm. especially, like, one, if one if the knee isn't 100%, but it's not like, you know, this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then two, totally deconditioned. And so as soon as he steps on the court, it's an entirely different team. 100%. It's such a different team. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, it, the age-old debate, like, you feel like that really defines MVP, right? Like, like right. this is a totally different team without him. Like, mm-hmm. he is a very valuable player. Kind of, you know, win, wins above uh, replacement. Kind yeah, of. yeah. And I mean, I don't, I don't know the exact specifics of what their ranking, the Sixers ranking, were before he went out, but they were up there. They were battling for like, you know, top seeds, if you will, top close, Some couple, close you know, to the top, yeah, yeah. T- close to the top. You know, you say. And then without them, they just slowly made their trickle the way to the bottom. I was like, oh man, oh on. man, like. <laughs> This is tough, and I mean, you know, I watch a lot of Sixers game, and watching 11 and 18 team without them, it's like, oh, I don't know. He's you, like, well, who's going to show up really well tonight? It or, was nice to see a few of the other guys step right. up. Ooh, Tyrese Maxey. Like, uh, 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 him the other night against uh, the Spurs when they went the double yeah. overtime. He was electric, 53, yeah. 52 points or whatever the case was. And I, I was like like clapping my hands and like, yeah, man, like that guy. And mm-hmm. then I was like, this was against the Spurs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. It's like, ah, you know. Which, which, but, you know, just – you get excited when those younger players or right, right. Max is getting, he's not, he's three, three, four years in or whatever. You right. want him to see, start taking that next yeah. step, you know, we really look good to certain yeah. times. And like a few of the guys, like, 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 yeah, mm-hmm. they just, and I think tonight they have uh DeAnthony Melton coming back. Um, I don't know the specifics about it, but I think he had a back injury and he was out for a little while. So now he's back too. So we're getting the right pieces in the right place at the right time, right? Like this is when you want your team all together. Sure. Um, yeah, to, to get hot, get strong. And you don't healthy, want the opposite happening the of like, you know, someone who's on the on the fence and they go the opposite way and then you, you get the report that they're out for the rest of the season. Which has been the six, Sixers MO for the last right. what, five years, six years. So, right. And then knock on wood, hopefully that's not going to be yeah, the case hopefully this time that, around. Exactly, right. And similar situation with another uh, good player. I think we did the last time good we talked about Knicks. yeah, the good old Knicks, right? We I talked about like Julius Randle. I grew up rooting it, so It's hard funny. Around. I definitely put the Mets on my notes for Julius Randle, but he's definitely plays on the on, on the, the Knicks. Knicks. <laughs> um, so it wasn't reported. Probably he'd be helpful on the yeah. Mets too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was uh sometime last week or this uh this past week or so 
it was reported that Julius Randle was getting shut down for the season. Oh. Um, and we talked about him having a shoulder dislocation the last yeah. time we were on. And I kind of went back a little bit and listened to it. And we kind of left it open. We we're like, ah, you know, this one's kind of tricky. Like, it, it can go one of t- it goes one of two ways. He can do the conservative treatment, rehab really well, get his shoulder stable, feel comfortable, and be able to go back. Or you try all that conservative Can't treatment, get doesn't, over the hump. doesn't get over the hump, and the next thing you know, you're getting surgery. That's and unfortunately for Julius Randle, he's going up the surgical route, and he's yeah. now shut down for the season. Yeah. Um, he's going to get the, a surgery on his shoulder after that dislocation he suffered back, and I think it was late January. And, you know, that's a, that that kind of stinks for the Knicks. You know, for you, sure. you don't want one of your better players who was having a decent year. Just, I feel like he's the best player. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess arguably, you know, but, but yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's interesting, and I think we, we went over it in length the last time we talked about it, of all the different things. When the shoulder dislocates, what you got to do, what you got to worry about, and all that stuff. So if you want to go back and listen to that episode, you get more of that. But it's interesting that to follow up on it, and I think we, sure. it's it's interesting, too, with our show, that we do get the ability to follow up on some of these things and kind of see what happens, and we make these predictions and just from the patterns that we see and the research that we know. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, we'll see what happens. And this one, I feel like when I was re-listening to the episode, we were really 50-50. We would say, it could yeah. go this way, but it's like, ah, oh, yeah, but what if we went this way? And totally hedged, yeah. And yeah, yeah. But that that's the nature of that particular yeah. injury, right? And that one in particular, like we said, and we went, again, all the specifics we went over. And he just, unfor- it sucks that it, it comes down to, it's like, ah, oh, you could just assume his rehab didn't go that well. And yeah. not that he didn't do the rehab well, it just didn't take the, the outcomes, didn't measure out like how they mm-hmm. wanted to. It's shoulder. funny. I feel. I feel like the Knicks have used the same tactic that Howie on the Eagles has used in terms of like the Knicks have just drafted all these. Uh, sorry, Howie's drafted all these players from Georgia, right? Mm-hmm. The Knicks are just going Villanova. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. They have uh, Jalen Brunson on the yeah. team. They, they kind of re- yeah. They reunited uh, all those guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 there's like I feel like maybe four or five guys. Like it's, it's yeah. Right. Not a bad strategy. No. Right. And so now. Just want to, again, follow up on those couple injuries. And I think, you know, a good discussion that we're going to break into now is we're in the heart of the spring, which means baseball's back. And baseball's in full swing. You know, Phillies fans got a, had a decent start. You know, we, we kind of ran into Spencer Strider early in the season with the Braves. Yeah. And unfortunately, he made headlines for the wrong reasons now. He's, he's looking potentially at his second Tommy John surgery. Yeah. And we've talked about the repeat Tommy John surgeries a few times and I feel like, at least this year, it started off real early. Yeah. I mean, we're only in the early part of April, and there's a lot of big names. A lot. A lot of people with these elbows and all this stuff. And yeah. then I think the correspondence to that is just, you know, all these, you know, news writers and stuff are going, is it the pitch clock? Is it this? Is it that? You know, what's happening with all these big names and all this? It's like, I totally the nature of the blew beast. It. I totally uh, you know, as, I, as we were driving down for the show, I was like, one of my favorite guests. Why didn't I reach I out to Greg Burke sooner? I know. So, so yeah, I wish I wish we had him on, but I didn't give him enough notice. But um, yeah, and we've gone down this road with Multi- him on mm-hmm. this on this particular oh, yeah. topic. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe it is. Like, it could be the pitching clock. But like, it's unbelievable right now. Yeah. How many guys? Yeah. Are out. Yeah. Like, it's it's incredible. Yeah, and it's just like you know you get it from all ends. You get it. Spencer Strider, who's came second in Cy Young. Uh, voting last year which right. is like top pitcher of the league and he had a phenomenal year last year and the Braves had a great year last year right. ran into the Phillies in the playoffs and <laughs> whatever but you know it just sucks to see and you know especially for him right it's his second time he's going to have to deal with this and I think it there's no formal report yet that he's actually having surgery he just has a sprain to his UCL which doesn't oh. always mean surgery but as we've talked about before it's tough when you're a usually pitcher usually does <laughs> it usually leads down yeah. And I think with that, too, it's just like all those elbow-like injuries that come up with baseball, you know, the yeah. elbow inflammation, the yeah. forearm flexors, this, yeah. the elbow sprain. It's like, ah, you know, you In just, a little bit of time, it all seems it to turn all into It leads up to that, right. Yeah. And I, I sent you a, a good USA Today article, and it had actually some good numbers in it. Right. And I think the one that, like, almost blew my mind a little bit was that 37.7%, so way over, almost over, well, it is over thir- one-third of all pitchers on MLB rosters at the end of the last season had a history of Tommy John surgery. One-third. One-third. More than one-third. One more, more than one-third of every pitcher in the major leagues already had their elbows reconstructed. Right, right. It's, 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 it's unbelievable, the nature of the beast, right? And you can go down a bunch of different avenues of the causation of this and, like, 
you know, in the article, it had some, you know, medical staff from different organizations. And, they, you know, this thing's been going on forever. It's only getting worse. Right. They were saying that there's a 400% increase in the last 10 years of 400. 100. The stat they used from 2021, 260 major and minor league pitchers had Tommy John surgery. That's a 400% increase over the, from 10 years ago, from 2011. In, two, in 20 and 21. Yeah, so that's three years ago the numbers are coming from. So, but still, that's a big number. The first, like, we, we talked about this a little bit. Mm. Let's just look at the Houston pitching staff right yeah. now. Right, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Valdez. Just got put on the IL. Yeah, yeah. Like, today or yesterday, I believe, with elbow inflammation, right. which is, you don't want to start to see that trend of, like, oh, now he needs to miss We know time. how this ends. Yeah, like, <laughs> like there's only the, all these different paths. Take right. whatever road you get. You're probably going to lead down to that surgery. As soon as you start hearing that elbow inflammation, you're like, oh, no. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, and then Verlander, shoulder, but shoulder. still, right, right, right. Has a history of it. You know, yeah. He has a history of it. Um, uh, Lance McCullers, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the, um, um, and Garcia, uh, right? Was the other guy, Garcia, yeah. Garcia, right, right. And there's someone else, too, I feel like that was out there. But anyway, like, like, are you kidding me? Like, how many guys? Right. And then, and then in terms of studs, good like mm-hmm. like really really high profile Cy Young winning Cy yeah. Young caliber players. Yeah. Right, right. Wasn't um actually I, I there was another article that I was reading. Verlander, like we talked about, Max Scherzer, DeGrom, yep. Garrett Cole, Alcantara. Yeah. All the big Lucas, like the, the Lucas poster Fiorito, kids. Brandon Woodruff. Yeah. Uh, Walker Bueller, Shane uh, McClanahan, like mm-hmm. uh, German Marquez, Tommy like non like non stop. Huge, huge names. And they like like and and not only is it like some of the best players in baseball or like the best pitchers in baseball up and down the rosters. It's yeah. like throughout every, every, you know, mm-hmm. and I mean, we even had a discussion. I forget when we did the show about Steven Strasburg and he came out a phenom. He's like, this is the guy, this is the guy. Right. He just he retired. Had, yeah. He had a great se- rookie season, I think. And then he had Tommy John yep. and he came back from the Tommy John did well. Then he started having all these other problems. Right. Right. And right. It's just like, Alter one piece of the kinetic chain of the the arm, right, and then yeah. it changes the mechanics of the throw. Yeah. Then something else is picking up the it's workload. Only a matter of time. Because yeah. everyone's throwing faster. Everyone's yeah. putting the spin rate and the velocity of the baseball has completely changed in the last I don't know, 10, 15 years. Right. And it's like, well, now you see all these guys hitting 100. You see people hitting 100 miles an hour way more often. Like, all the time. I, I'll admit, I didn't watch much baseball like growing up, but I. I feel like as I started to watch baseball more and later in life, it's just like, holy crap, that guy hit 100. And now I, it's just like. That's what I remember, too. It's like, like, oh, now everyone, everyone's everyone got somebody in their bullpen who can throw 100 miles an hour. Everybody. Everybody's yeah. got somebody. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's unbelievable. And I think a lot of this comes to, like, they have all these people, all these pitching gurus, all these people with the weighted balls, all these new training techniques and stuff, which is great. I think it helps. Yeah. But I think. Sometimes it's like you got to have a little bit of balance. You got to right. have a little bit of that chronic use of the arm over and over and over again. Like, do you, do you it, ever think we'll see pitchers like, you know, the classic is everyone points to is Greg Maddox, but mm-hmm. even on that same staff, Tom Glavin to a certain extent mm-hmm. and um, uh, Jamie Moyer, mm-hmm. right? Like then, uh, and there are a few other guys that, that ha- were able to do it where, you know, they're throwing like, you know, like high eighties, low nineties, mm-hmm masterful pitchers mm-hmm. um like i almost feel like we're at a point now where the where this the statistics you know mm-hmm. like that means so much that mm-hmm. it doesn't matter your wins and losses right it doesn't matter how good of a pitcher you are right like smart pitcher technical pitcher know the game uh in and out controlling and like like you mm-hmm. know all this other you know uh, fast and slow and all these other things right. if you don't have the spin rate and the velocity you're never going to get a chance. Right. And and I think like that's a huge part of why mm-hmm. like cuz in order to have the spin rate and the velocity required to make the majors mm-hmm. regardless if you're a good pitcher or not, right? Like you just need those those statistics. It's almost like like um, SATs were for college and mm-hmm. sort of going back to it like if you didn't have the number, like right. you're not even going to get you're looked, not even at. looked at. It doesn't Correct. matter yeah. if you did everything else amazingly. Yeah. And so so if you don't have those numbers, um, you're, you're like sh- shut it down. So that's the focus. The yeah. whole focus is, like you said, throwing away the ball as hard as you can yeah. against the wall, and, and and getting your spin rate up, and getting your and putting mm-hmm. all the stress, and learning this when you're a kid. Right. Right. Like, I, you know, I mean, Greg Burke was on well, one of the shows uh, way back when. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about because he had had Tommy John surgery as well, mm-hmm. and he he talked about how you know he he had the injury, he had the surgery, 
You know, it took forever for him to recover. 18 months, two years, you mm -hmm. know, it used to take a lot longer. And, but when he came back, he did have a couple extra ticks on his, on his fastball. Yeah. And I, and I made the argument, you know, I would argue that it's not the Tommy John surgery that did that for you, mm -hmm. but actually the, the attention to detail yep. with the rehab mm -hmm. and focusing mm -hmm. on uh, your mechanics and the yep. rehab and getting strong. And, and now that I think about that statement, like, like why don't people just do that? The truth is they are, and they're doing it at a younger age. Yeah. And now they're throwing harder because of that, mm -hmm. which is resulting in more Tommy John yeah. on the collateral yeah. ligament injuries. Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. it's interesting that it's actually flipped and become a bad thing. Right. Like it's, it's kind of like you can kind of take it a di bunch of different ways, right? Like you get all those people. And I think a couple different things where I'm going to go down with like social media has an influence because you see all these videos of Absolutely. all these people doing all these. Oh, that's going to take us down. So nice yeah. way. Yeah. Minute. You know, all those different things. And then you have, like, the youth sports specialization, which I think is, like, killing these kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know... If you, I'm fighting it right now for my son. You know, you look at all the big names of... Let's go non-pitchers, you know, like the Bryce Harper. Right. You know, Mike Trout specifically, if right. you think about... They're all three-sport athletes in, in, in high school. They right. all play different things. They right. played basketball. They did, ran track. They did this. They did that. Yes. You know, it. I think it, it builds a well-rounded athlete... And you get all that different things. And even you go NFL players, you know, who are really good. Patrick Mahomes. Right. He played baseball, baseball basketball. Right. right. You know, um, Jalen Hurts played other sports. Right. All these different guys. They did different things, not just one thing. Right. Because you do the one thing and you just wear out your arm. Like, you right. only got one arm that you're using. Right. Now, I'm crazy in the thought of, like, why not just take the time? You're going to use, not waste, but use all this time to specialize your kid in this sport. Yeah. Why not teach him to throw from both with both arms? <laughs> like Very I know when I was in when I was in grad school, our baseball coach's son had Tommy John or some kind of surgery of shut his arm down. Yeah. So his dad said, "Look." Speaking of Otani, right? Sorry, yeah, it, well, that too. You know, Otani, right? Uh, you know, he he told his kid just learn how to throw your other arm. You, while, while you're doing nothing, you know, at least you can throw, right? You nothing wrong with your left arm, whatever right. opposite arm. And the kid started with just a tennis ball against the wall, just like that, just with his arm. And he became an uh, ambidextrous pitcher. Right. Which is a rarity. I got to tell you, that's a, that's a gifted kid right yeah. there. Not everybody can do that. No, right. That's and it's amazing. just like, and if you did, maybe maybe it changes the landscape of things. And, and I jokingly say, I think I say this all the time in my practice. It's like, well, just take a break from that and try it with the other arm. Right. Just do a little bit with the other arm just for like a couple of days and see what happens. Just give the give your, your dominant arm a rest. It's hard for people to press reset, like, for sure. And that, that, and then I think the other term I use or like, you know, um, I've been kind of going away from the overtrain, the right. word overtrain in that, that that vernacular, and going to the under recovered. You're not you're not letting your body recover enough. That, that's well said. You know what I mean? To to go out and perform on a high level the next day. And right. maybe I don't know, the pitch clock could have changed the recovery because they're pitching a little faster, doing more in a shorter amount of time, or whatever the case is. Like, right. You can go all over the board with different ideas. So, yeah, so what are some of the theories out there? Actually, there was just an, uh, an interview with, with Justin Verlander, mm -hmm. and um, it's that's a pretty good, pretty good interview. Yeah. And, and he, he, like, he said you know, the, the, right, the obvious thing, the obvious sources that, that everyone's looking at is it's a pitch clock, right? Like, like you have to get up, you got to pitch very quickly. You don't have the time to, mm -hmm. to, to rest in between pitches or yeah. recover in between pitches and whatnot. And then that's a factor. I mean, I guess it would be hard to argue that it isn't. Right. But I don't know if that's the end all be all. No, and I don't think it is because, I mean, according to the article I sent in the USA Today, it did say that there was more injuries two years ago before the pitch clock was became a rule last year like the yeah. last year of their first year small sample size baseball's been around for a long long time what was the year of the holdout oh, that's a good question i forget was that that was that the year they're talking about because that was also a big concern right because they didn't have a full spring training right 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 so, and even like covid year two they you right. know dip. so it's curious variables very yeah a bunch of different variables and baseball is all about the different variables all the different things and all the numbers and all the little right this and that little ticky tacky things about baseball. Speaking of ticky tacky things, that's another variable, <laughs> yeah, right? Like they right. went, they cracked down mid season right. uh -huh. about uh, substances like using bullfrog and sunscreen and this and that. Yep. All the tacky things that you can use. Yeah. And then that was, what, what was his name? I forget the uh, the very outspoken uh, pitcher who, who got through tours on the collateral ligament very shortly after the, the, they cracked down and he blamed it Not on uh, Chapman. No. Oh, gosh. I'm, Glass now, Tyler Glass now. Oh yeah, right, yeah. right. So he tears tears his own collateral ligament, and um, so that like 
So now they're, they're checking for substances in mm -hmm. between. And, and the argument they were making was they can no longer hold the baseball like kind of the tips of the fingers. Mm -hmm. They have to really palm it. Yeah. And then that it's much harder to get their spin and mm -hmm. they have to throw it harder. And um, so like that happens, mm -hmm. which coincides with a more lively ball. So mm -hmm. pitchers feel like now they can't, they can't just put it in play. Mm -hmm. They need swings and misses because yeah. put it in play means, you know, out in left field. Yeah. Um, and so so that happens. Pitch clock happens. Like we've been talking about sports specialization. Yeah. And just throwing possibly harder than the human body can right. actually handle. Because th the throwing motion, like a human throwing a baseball, it we do, it happens. But it's pretty like, not, it's hard to say like unnatural, but it's just... Yeah. The force that goes through the elbow exceeds what the elbow should withhold. Normally be able to do. Right. Like, right. I forget the exact Newtons or whatever it was. Yeah. I remember yeah. I did a project on it in school. That's pretty cool. And it was like, you throw, like, I don't know, like four times as many Newtons through that elbow that you should it should hold while you're throwing, you're pitching a baseball. And you do it, you know, a good a good starting pitcher is pitching 60 to 90 pitches a game, a start, right. you know? Yeah. And it's funny, like, I always find it interesting that those are the pitches that in the game that count. The right. 60 to 90. That doesn't count the warm-up throws, the yeah. pitches in between every inning. Right. You know, that's so you're talking 150 throws right. a day. Yeah. You know, and then and then in your recovery program, you're throwing 190 yard or 190 feet is like you know long tossing and all those other things. It's right. Like, but people used to throw more pitches. I don't want to just say it's that. No. Like, yeah. You look at uh, we always we always, everyone turns to Nolan Ryan, and that, that that guy was just in his own. Yeah. World. Like, if, if you look back with some of the stuff he did, it, it is absolutely. But, like, Clemens and Randy Johnson and, like, like all, the, all these other guys that were monster, like, hard throwers, but yet monsters in terms of mm -hmm. in inning eaters. And longevity and everything else, right? But I think we're also talking about guys that, like you said, played other sports. Yeah. Right? Like, and, and I think this pressure for younger kids. Uh, so, so, and actually, this is kind of my own little philosophy here on this. But, and, mm -hmm. and, um, high school sports were the epitome, right? Mm -hmm. And in high school sports, just go play as well as you can during the season mm -hmm. and then go play your next sport. Mm -hmm. Now, club sports are what gets you into college. Yeah. Club sports are what gets you to the next level. And what drives club sports? Money. Yeah. You need to have people playing year round. Yeah. So they put a lot of pressure on you in, in, in your club sports that if yep. you're not if you're not here off season, mm -hmm. if you don't give up, soccer for lacrosse or lacrosse for soccer you know whatever, yeah. whatever the, the 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 sport is going to be and if you go and play it out of the sport well i'm just going to feel i'm going to backfill with this other guy who is going to be here right and he's going to get the shot and you're yeah. not going to get the shot mm -hmm. so then you drop your other sport right yeah. and you just do that one sport and then you either burn out by the time you get to, mm -hmm. by the time you get to college or you're ready for your injury by the time you get to college yeah. And, and yeah I feel, I feel like that's a big i, th I think it's factor. tough and i you know i think I think that external pressures to like make those big decisions for young kids. They're like, well, I want to be successful in something. Like, right. you want to pick something. Like, right, I'll just focus on this. Where it's like, yeah, just do a little bit of everything. Just get right. a little. Get, you can get your You're feet better right. in the end. Yeah. You're like, better in the end. I was just talking about like uh, with one of my coworkers today about it, and we were talking about these stats and all these different things. And I was just like, you know, it helps to change it up a little bit. Like baseball has its. It's, sure. you know, mechanics of whatever, but like, say basketball, you're right. changing, you're completely changing the game. It's yeah. not as rotational as baseball. It's not so like this repetitive motion. You're, you're doing plyometrics, you're doing agility work, you're right. doing a lot of intense cart, like high interval training, running up and down a, a small right. court. Yeah. It's like so high, hand eye. Yeah. Like hand eye coordination, and, and dribbling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so hard to freaking dri dribble a basketball, like <laughs> effectively, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. And you see what the like guys like Steph Curry dribbling, like three tennis balls and balancing a ball on his head, doing all these different things. And it's Amazing. like that coordination helps you in other things. Yeah. And it has, I don't know what the real numbers are, the carryover effect of different things, but it's like, it makes you a well-rounded athlete. That's exactly and I think does. those well-rounded athletes don't get hurt as much. Yeah. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, th I think the guy who plays the one sport year round is better when he's in, you know, ninth grade and 10th grade and 11th mm -hmm. grade, and, you know, maybe in 12th grade, but he's not as good as the guy who played all three sports. Mm -hmm through those years and then started to really solidify in one right. sport. And, you know, when, in terms of like, you know, post grad, you know, college, you know, freshman right. year, college, sophomore year, college, like, like that guy has a higher ceiling. Right. Athletically. I typically. think with that said too, like, I think when you have to make a decision later in life, it's better for like someone, again, just the poster kid, if you will, Patrick Mahomes, right. He played in, he played 
uh, baseball in college. That was uh, played for the Mets. Right. For the Mets. You know, he he played in uh, baseball in college, and then he had to make a decision. He got drafted by the MLB. I'm pretty sure too. He did. Then he had to make a decision. Yeah. When you make a decision, I thought he made a terrible decision. <laughs> right. I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's doing pretty well for no, himself. Like when you make that decision later on in life, when you have such a good foundation as an athlete, I think you're better off, and you have less of a chance of getting injured. Yeah. Now, granted, he plays a very injury prone sport and sure. very contact but he plays a position that's relatively protected which is good yeah but i think making that decision later in life helps you out injury wise later on if you and instead if he said no i'm not playing any college baseball i'm just going to play college football right you know so i don't know it's where, where does it go i don't know it's, it's tough i mean you have to change the public view on some things i guess, I guess. Yeah. and you know have to put your foot down as a parent to maybe let your kids do other things and not just be so heavily involved and let, let them just be a kid and play different sports. You know, have the different, like enjoy the seasons, right? you know, enjoy the, we're inside for basketball season or wrestling season. Then yeah. we're outside for baseball or yeah. whatever the kid. And then we're on the soccer field or the football field in the fall, you know? And, and I guess I kind of alluded, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fight that battle a little bit. I don't want to say battle uh, for, for my son because there's been like, like, I don't want to say pressure, but there's a little bit of pressure. And I think he feels the pressure. My son mm-hmm. does, you know, to, he doesn't want to let anybody down. So right. he wants to be there for each team and whatnot. Um, I will say we've been pretty fortunate and we've been pretty lucky that we've generally had pretty good and understanding coaches. Yeah. And in the end, they, they're like, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it's eighth grade, whatever, you know, yeah, like, like, right. Like, go do whatever it is you're going to do and go, go be the best yeah. you can be kind of a thing. And I think like, and you see him on the internet a lot. Those like those signs, those little league fields. This isn't the World Series. Your right. kid isn't playing for a million dollar contract. Right. Like, let the kids be kids and just enjoy the game. Enjoy the you game. know, my nephew, he's uh, just turned six, I think. Yeah, six. And he had his first uh, baseball game this past week. I couldn't make it, but, you know, That's uh, so much my brother was talking kids. to me it's about it. And you just, it's like, it's, God, man, I can't wait to get out there. Just to see, like, just yeah. just fun of the sport. You know, yeah. these kids are learning. They're trying. They're playing all different stuff. He played yeah. catcher. He played outfield. He played second base, you know. Yeah. And he did pretty well, I guess, hitting. You know, it's like coach toss, whatever. Yeah. But it's like. Just enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy the ride. You know, don't go, don't go crazy and go down the line to start hiring all these gurus. And I think, unfortunately, the business business of sport, I think, is what's taking a lot of it. Very much. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And it, it can, I think it, it has its place and it's, it's a problem that we see. And I think with that problem becomes a need for folks like you and I who right. help fix these problems and all these other things. But I think there's got to be a bigger step in prevention and I think we can go on a long road of injury prevention talk and all these different things, but yeah, I don't know. One, one interesting stat and before, before we move on to the next topic and this, uh, I actually was not aware of this stat and I learned in the, the USA today article mm-hmm. that, that you shared with me, they had, a, I think a high number, like 90, 95% return from Tommy John. I always oh, had, yeah, yeah. I always had it around 85, 85 up to 90 yeah. uh, in terms of re- the first time with John. Mm-hmm. Down to fifty to fifty five percent if you tear it again. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then think, and we, we talked about Drew Rasmussen um, uh, a few a while, little while back yeah. with with with, with He's Greg third, Park, like, You're third, like third. Come on, even with I the could, technology and the improvement of surgeries, like yeah. that trauma to your elbow, and it's like you're still putting all that stress on it. Yeah, and then you want to perform at that high level again and to throw a baseball ninety some miles an hour. Right. It just, and then you know, I think with that too is like. You hope he gets a couple years in between those surgeries. You'd hope it's not like back to back to back. But like yeah. with that being said, you get a couple years, you're looking, you know, five, seven years in between surgeries or yeah. like the first and the third. Yeah. You get a little older, you heal a little differently. Your lifestyle is different. He might have kids or whatever, you know, yeah. like. Now, on the flip side of that, from the financial standpoint, mm-hmm. in baseball, they're guaranteed contracts. Yeah. Right. So you get you get this big contract. And then you go out with your elbow injury. Mm-hmm. You come back two years later. Now, now you have two years of extra shelf life. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like yep. It was, and so, so maybe you come back and it's a little slow return. And mm-hmm. you know, these guys always get very good in their contract year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now you get another contract out mm-hmm. of it. So, so it's so it's, it's crazy yeah. from the contract standpoint. Well, you prolong your baseball life sometimes. So with that being said, with the money standpoint, yeah. uh, the USA Today article said there was $1.147 billion in salary of injured players and their respective replacements paid by the MLB. So you're, you're paying the player yeah. who gets whomever it is with their contract, and they get hurt. Right. So then you got to fill someone, they got to fill that roster spot, yeah. and you pay that guy. 
Yeah. And that's over a billion dollars of different salaries. You're paying people who are hurt to just, you know, just to get Be better. Right. And then you're paying the other guy to fill his spot to play and hopefully make a difference for your team. Yeah. And the fact that you weren't planning on having that guy, you know, in the rotation or whatever the case is, it's just like. And if you're the Mets, you're still paying Bobby Bonilla. <laughs> that guy, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, how does how does NFL not have? Guaranteed contract. I mean, for obvious reasons, right? It's, right. it's such an injury yeah. prone right. that, like, 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 you know, the owners yeah. would like. And they, they, they have. Goes down. You get all these guys who are making big, big money, and they're getting. You want to get close to like seventy percent of their contracts that they have are guaranteed. Now you're right. seeing it more often. I think yeah. again, you know, Patrick Mahomes. We've mentioned, you know, certain guys can um, demand it. Right. right, and but you know, and that too is the NFL is trying to be a little bit safer. They're trying yeah. to change some things. Speaking of which. Speaking of which, right. <laughs> They adopted a new kickoff rule uh, this year. They're adopting the former XFL, now UFL's kickoff rule. Right. Um, where the teams line up kind of on the opposing 30-yard line and no one can kind of move till the ball's caught. Kind of crazy and, to see. And it's only like five yards in between yeah. uh, offensive or receiving team and kicking team. So there's only a five-yard uh, sprint towards each other. So you don't have like guys flying, flying at each other. Flying 40 yards down the field and making contact. Theoretically makes sense. It theoretically makes sense. And now the UFL formerly XFL and USFL, they merged, right? So um, UFL's now, I think, a couple seasons in, or a couple weeks in, excuse me. Yeah. And um, they had an interesting, again, a kickoff injury not too long ago to someone who was kind of in the mix of the world of social media. Um, Donald Dela, Delahaye, I, I'm, I'm not a big follower, also known as Destroying on YouTube, yeah. had a big YouTube following, was trying to make an active vlog series to get his way to the NFL. Now he um, was a previously he was a previous, a previous college. kicker, yeah, yeah, which college is college. again we kind of talked about this before. He was a kicker for Central Florida back in 2016, 2017. He made a YouTube channel, started to get famous via YouTube and making money. Yeah. Back in the day when college athletes weren't allowed to make money, predated the NIL. Pre predate yeah. the NIL. So then he quit football and continued his YouTube career, yeah. and then started to try to make it to the pros. And the UFL gave him a chance, and he made the San Antonio team. And then he goes on a kickoff and makes a very poorly formed tackle. And then right. he just came out today that he has some, some fractures in his neck. Broke his neck. Broke his neck. And it's like, <laughs> man, that's... What a safety move. Right. That is that is bad timing yeah. and unfortunate. Yeah. And, and, you know, like, I almost equate it to pitchers, right? Like, like you know, they, they've gotten rid of, like, pitchers in the... That's also another factor, I think, for 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 pitchers injuring their arms. Like, mm-hmm. at least in the in the in the National League, at least you had like almost one guaranteed out, right? Like, right. But now you have the DH in both uh-huh. leagues, and so like you gotta throw harder. All yeah, the way you through. got more people to pitch at, right? But not long ago, pitchers were hitting in the National League, mm-hmm. right? And you'd see what it what it's like for a basically a regular person. Regular person has a great arm, right? Yeah, That's right. why they're pitching, but they're not hitters. They're not baseball players. Right. They're just regular people with a yeah. great arm and you see how like they'd look like a mess out there mm-hmm. like so now now he's that's like what a kicker is right like mm-hmm. he's like a regular guy who can kick the ball really far right, right? Like, and you see him go try to make a tackle, tackle. yeah oh, oh, oh that's what it's- and you know it's he even said it in his i think he made a post on social media instagram whatever the case was and he just said i i really encourage all you kids who play football to really learn how to form tackle learn mechanics like learn the mechanics of tackling because that is one of the most dangerous aspects of football is poorly formed tackles and most kickers aren't thinking about that no you know? and like and it's always like like I'm actually surprised it took this long. Like you see right. them try to make tackles you, sometimes. You do, and yeah. it's and it's and not the rugby guys from Australia. Those no. guys are impressive. Those guys will <laughs> those guys will tackle. And you know, there's an argument, and I, I'm a firm believer in that. Teaching rugby style tackling does help with yeah. reduction of head impact. Now, I can't say it reduces concussion, but it just reduces the force impacted on the head when you're making these tackles. And I mean, I've gone to lengths with I've in my previous jobs. I've done helmetless tackling drills with our football teams. Wow to reduce um, head impacts and sure. we we had a reduction in concussions the following year i'm I not saying it. it was a all-cause reason but to take the time out to really because i mean i've been on the sidelines for a lot of football practices and a lot of football games right and you don't i see it more now but you don't see that tackling practice as much like right. And it's not like live drills. No, not live drills. Like breaking down the way to tackle in different scenarios on a, in a football game safely. Right. right. And it just doesn't happen that much. Or, unfortunately, it's taught improperly. Yeah. And it's like I did a lot of research. And, you know, I think at the time, about like, I don't know, eight years ago or whatever, Seattle Seahawks were big on the, you know, the helmless tackling. And uh, 
uh, I want to say University of Massachusetts, I think, was in right. a big article about it. And, they, you know, they did all this stuff with helmets tackling. Yeah. They took the helmets off. And people, when you ha- don't have a helmet on, you're you don't have to. Do totally different. You're going to protect your head a little bit more right. in, a, in a controlled environment. You're not playing a football game without a helmet on. Right. But, you know, I just think learning those me- techniques and learning how to tackle rugby style yeah. Because rugby doesn't have any pads, but right. they also do have the concussion. They have all the same similar injuries. Yeah. I just think the rates of it is a little different, and just obviously the sports a little different too. But I think it made would make a difference if it was done properly more often and you know instructed better. Yeah, any every, any guy that steps on that field needs to learn that needs to yeah. go through that, even if it's a kicker and it's not often that you're going to be the guy that's doing that. No, and but I'm kind of curious with the new rules. Like, is the kicker going to have a bigger role? Right, because in meeting them at that, that right because that weird line. you know, like those the five yards of impact those guys are coming out. It's going to be easier to break between or the whole. I, I assume there's going to be different holes, whatever the right. case is. And you, like you said, the only people who are moving before the ball is caught, according to the quick article I read, just to get some information, was the kicker and the receiver. So right. they're going to kind of be moving along each other and kind of potentially eyeing each other up and right. they could be the last guy defense yeah. and usually when you see especially the older kickers they just kind of like they kind of square up and they just do a dive and they hope yeah, for the best kind of ah darn it you broke my ankle i hope he oh, trips no. over me yeah <laughs> <laughs> try to get a quick shoelace on the way down right, but like right, right, right. i mean again for longevity purpose it's just it's not worth it to try to run run or try to tackle somebody who's running a 4 2 40 not running so, with all that yeah. speed and velocity and the momentum the superhuman athletes. Yeah, and you're just a guy who can kick a ball really far. You're not. You're not. Not yeah. saying the the kickers aren't athletes in the in the world of football, but it's right. just in comparison to everyone else who plays the sport. Yeah, he's specialized. Yeah, he's got a great leg. He yeah. doesn't need to have all those other things. Right. As long as he's got a great leg, he yeah. does what he does. And right. For the like, most like, part, you're protected. You know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Exactly. So then, and then, and then you're just kind of put out there and expected yeah. to, to to jump in and knock down and take and, down this. this and other you know what? That kind of injury. I'm going to make the grand assumption, you know, this this kicker is just going to say, okay, I did it. I yeah. made I'm good. I hope I hope he's – so this, like, it looks like he's okay right now. Right? Yeah. And I, and I, hope he, I hope there are no, no issues. repercussions. Right, or absolutely. You know, and if he's able to get back and play again, more power to him. But I, I, I'd kind of be surprised. Yeah. Think, like, and I think football is one of those sports where you can, you can get some gnarly injuries. And we've talked about plenty. I mean, check out our shows from any time from August all the way up until February. We right. have a lot of different discussions on different things. And sometimes those real bad injuries are just like, I just don't know if I like. Is it worth it? If it were me, I'm hanging them cleats up real, really quick, you know. Yeah. And it is what it is with different people. So when we when we covered the Arena League and covered a lot mm-hmm. of those games, uh, the Blackjacks and the Soul, and like, yeah, like those guys were, they were beasts, man. And oh yeah, like, they really really sold out, man. Like it was yeah. like like they would just give their bodies up. It was yeah. really, and and it wasn't like, I get it. On one level, if you're doing it for the NFL and you're making generational money, right, it's an entirely different story. Yeah. If you're like getting by for the year, like yeah, kind of almost scraping by for the year, like, yeah, like, you know what I mean. Like, and no, and not, but they love the game. Yeah, and I think the love of the game goes a long way. You know, not to say that those other leagues aren't putting out a good product. Sure. You know, it's entertainment, right? And I think, you know, especially those like the Arena League. When I remember when I was an intern working with them too, it's just like. The environment was just so nice, so family friendly. Like, oh yeah, the entertainment value was there. But yeah. like you said, these guys aren't making generational money playing in arena football, you know. So it's tough to like see all that stuff happen, and then you get all these injuries, and you get these wicked injuries, and then you know the brain, the brain changes, or whatever the case is. And just, that stuff's scary. That's it's real yeah. scary, you yeah. know. I admire the NFL taking action. Yeah, finally, right? Like. To do their best to reduce some mm-hmm. of that stuff, what you know, it remains to be seen if that's going to work. And really unfortunate timing that uh, what's the right word? The new program or the mm-hmm. new um, way that they switched to doing it, a guy gets this really severe injury yeah. just as the NFL yeah. adopts it. It's really poor right. timing. But I, I do have to say, I admire them trying to make the change, trying to adopt, right. trying to reduce the number of injuries. And like that's one of the biggest things right there. Like you know, yeah. the traumatic encephalopathy. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find a way to hopefully you know prevent that, reduce those, and I think it has right. Like the nope. days of two a days are pretty much gone and across a lot of like NCAA, NFL, yeah. the days of doing the good old Oklahoma drills, all that stuff, Oklahoma all those, yeah, yeah, yeah. all those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, oh man, and it's funny. Like my friends and I joke about that. A lot of my friends that I have now, we all played freshman football together. I played like three years in high school or whatever the case. Like we lived through that era of like when that stuff was just. Wild West, if you will. Right. Concussions were graded mild, moderate, severe, and right. you could 
your symptoms go away in five to ten minutes. All right, good. Back. Bell. Get yeah. back in there. Yeah, exactly. Like those days are long gone, and it's like everything's just a little different. And the game is generally safer, but it's still a very dangerous, violent game. It's no the way. nature of the no beast, ways about it. and you can't, you can't you can't avoid it. It just it is what it is. It is what it is. I think we covered all kinds of different stuff tonight. We went across almost every spectrum except for maybe NHL for the most part um, and talked about you know, different injuries. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you it's know. It's exciting, man. Like, like it's, it was, uh, we, we've been doing it a little more recently, right? Like, we, we had this, we had the real tight protocol, not tight protocol, we had the protocol for the show, the MO. Yeah. Uh, but we've covered so many of the injuries that every now and then, we, I think more frequently now we're doing some of these other shows where it's just yeah. like, a little more just 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 a little a little looser a little more general different like wider range of topics and we can kind of shoot around and i think we'll still do some of those yeah focus in but yeah we get to see some evolution yeah absolutely and i think it's also interesting too is just like even the short amount of time that i've been doing the show and i mean you've been doing the show since it's it's a a inception inception correct and just how things have even changed in that short amount of time and like two three years of different ideas and you know talk about baseball again the internal bracing of the ucl is the big yeah. thing now and yeah. all these different surgery techniques and all the different rehab protocols are all changing and the world of sports medicine forever evolving uh, absolutely yeah and, question and we're living in it and that's why we continually do this continuing education all these different things to stay yeah. on top of it because you I mean you can blink an eye and everything changes lost and, behind yeah, and yeah. you're like fi- like five years from now we're going to be looking back at this episode I'm like man those things we talked about that's so ancient like, what a bunch of idiots yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so with that being said Always a pleasure to sit down with you, and I mean, it, like I said, it feels like forever since we got down. We we survived some natural disasters and some s- crazy eclipses and other things. Yeah. But and, spring is here. But spring is here. Today was finally a nice day. I got to wear shorts and t-shirts to work. You know, short sleeve, and it's been great. So we're gonna give a quick shout out to our sponsors before we head on out of here, and uh, we're gonna go finish our episodes like we always do with a good old milk tube. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, oh, so just a good quick shout Sour out. Sour Fest May 18th. Oh yes, Sour Fest May 18th. From Neck of the Woods Brewing Company, one of our favorite sponsors and our location where we shoot this show. May 18th, 2024, here at Total Turf in Pittman. Please come check it out. We will. I'm, I'm most likely going to be here as long as anything doesn't pop up. Um, we might even be doing a live recording that night, that afternoon. We'll, we're going to play it out to see what happens. And Timber Real Production helping us put this, uh, put this together generates all our stuff on video, audio, YouTube, Instagram. So please give us a follow, a like, a share, anything to help us grow. We appreciate it. And we'll see everyone next time. 